Hey everybody and welcome back to Maximalist Workshop. I have some more substantive videos coming along, but those are taking some time and today's Prime Day. So I wanted to give you an update on what I think are the best deals on Amazon Prime right now for 3D printers specifically. To begin, I want to start with the printer that I think is probably the best deal as far as like lowest cost printer that's also going to give you a good out of the box experience. This is the Flash Forge Adventurer 5M. Now, full disclosure, I haven't had a chance to test the 5M. I'm considering getting it for testing at this moment. But in the meantime, I have seen a lot of really good things about it. I have the Adventurer 3. Uh, I believe I have the 3 Pro. But in any case, it's always been a good printer for me. I've had some issues recently with the Wi-Fi. But it's nothing a good old Ethernet cable wasn't able to solve. This is a fast printer, just like the Bamboo Lab. It has what is now becoming a sort of industry standard of the 600 millimeters per second on top speed and 20,000 millimeters per second squared in terms of acceleration. But of course, these are not speeds that you should be expecting to hit during your regular printing. These are more probably travel speeds and really they're ambitious if we're being honest. This is something that some other YouTubers are starting to cover, but it's also something I want to talk about further when it comes to both the SV08 and the S1. One thing to consider when deciding whether or not to buy this printer, however, is that it is not open source. As a matter of fact, it's arguably less open source than some of the alternatives like Bamboo Lab in that you have this sort of 3S quick detach nozzles. Now, while there may become a time when these are available from a third party, as a matter of fact, there might already be ones available from third parties, these are still a proprietary design that is going to be fairly exclusive. Now, with Bamboo Lab, there have been a lot of different versions of the hot end that have come out from third parties, and you can continue to get them for fairly cheap. However, I don't know how much of an ecosystem exists with respect to the Adventure 5M or will exist in the future that will continue to support having these quick detached nozzles. That said, in my experience, Flash Forge has done a decent job at making sure that those things stay available as new generations of their printers come out. I'm looking at you, Anycubic. And at some point, someone might also come up with an adapter that allows you to use standard V6 nozzles, but right now you're stuck in the ecosystem. It's a trade-off. So if you want something that's probably between a K1 from Creality and a Bamboo Lab X1C in terms of ease of use, you don't mind a fairly closed garden when it comes to mods and replacement parts, but you don't want to or can't spend more than $300, then this might be the printer for you. Just keep in mind that because it's not enclosed, you might have to do some modifications before you can print with anything other than TPU, PETG, or PLA. The next printer I want to talk about is the Two Trees SK-1. This printer is one that's had me curious for a while, and like the Adventurer 5M, it's not one that I've really had a lot of hands-on experience with. I was able to see it at the Rocky Mountain Rep Rap Festival, and it seemed to be printing really well. The thing that intrigues me most about it is that that top speed is just a little bit more punchy than the Bamboo Lab in theory, and it has that Z-tilt leveling. Instead of just adapting on the Z-axis for ABL, it's actually tilting the bed to make it more level. Now, adjusting the tilt of your plate generally, these are things that you can do with the K1. Manual leveling is possible in the Bamboo Lab, but this, to me, is definitely an advancement. This is definitely something that I was looking forward to seeing in a commercial-style printer that you can buy out of a box, as opposed to something more like the Voron Trident, or the Ender XY with the new Kinetomatics kit. Overall, it's a really cool machine. I wish I could re recommend it from experience, but at $375, it seems like a good deal. I'm definitely thinking about getting one. That brings me to the last printer on my list. And honestly, this is the one that I'm most excited about. Anybody who has seen my channel before knows that I have had some issues with the Soval SV08. Um, its nozzles are falling apart when we run PETG through it. And there have been fixes that have been put out. Uh, there's some fixes that I'm going to be talking about in an upcoming video. And Soval has indicated that they would be releasing either a new design or new nozzles that are somehow better with respect to the machining. 
I'm not sure really which one it is, and I'm trying to get clarification, but now that I've had more time to look into the issue, I'm starting to understand better what must have happened, though it would be great if we could get more clarity from Soval with respect to which nozzles are the fixed ones, if any, and whether a new design was actually implemented, or if this is the same design that they had had before, and they are not planning to change the nozzles to prevent nozzle failures going forward. Um, in any case, it it's a really nice machine. And frankly, most people who are going to be adopting the SV08 in the way that I'm most excited about and in the way that I'm looking forward to most as a platform for improvement as opposed to a 3D printer that's meant to work out of a box like a Bamboo Lab, I think this could be a good investment, even more so if you compare it to a Voron 2.4 kit or even self-source. To the extent that you're interested in getting an SV08, there has been a long waiting line. There are many, many people who have pre-ordered the machine. Recently, it was listed on Amazon, but it was listed at some ridiculous price like $700 if you want just the base machine, which for reference, right now, if you go to the Soval website, you can get it for about 579 and after shipping, after everything is said and done, after tax, frankly, you're looking at about the same price as on Amazon currently. Now, whether this is a good deal for you is up to you. It's up to whether you want the machine. I'm genuinely considering getting a second one, given all the experience that I've had with the machine so far, given some of the fixes that I'll talk about in a later, later video to come soon. It's a machine that I'm slowly growing to have a little bit more faith in, and it's been doing a good job in my workshop. It's hard to say whether the machine that you would get by buying it from Amazon would be old stock or new, depending on which warehouse it came from when, and whether Soval has actually implemented a new nozzle on their machines uh, to be sent out to the public, as opposed to waiting for them to fail and then replacing them afterward. These are all questions that are up in the air. If you're interested in getting this machine and you're concerned that it might take a really long time if you bought it from Soval, buying it from Amazon right now might be the best bet. Not only will you get fast shipping, it'll come to you in two days if you're in the US, but also you might have a little bit more faith in Amazon with respect to its return policies. More on that in another video to come. Anyway, if you like this video, go ahead and leave a like. If you'd like to see more like it, please subscribe. And if you have any feedback, whether it be constructive or complimentary, please leave it in the comments below. This has been Maximalist Workshop. Thanks so much.